putting him on. There you go. speak to you in confidence I don't want to uh, I don't want to be in a position of trying to uh, uh, influence or pressure anyone but uh, uh, I'd be glad to uh, all right I uh, uh, think that we're confronted with the, uh, the realistic uh, problem that we faced all through the years uh, uh, combination of the South and the Republicans uh, the uh, Republicans uh, have got uh, a new leadership. They've kicked out Halleck, and uh, there's a great challenge to that leadership between uh, Ford and uh, a fellow named Laird of Wisconsin, who was Goldwater's choice to be chairman of the platform committee. And uh, uh, those people uh, have got a substitute which is a very dangerous one. They tried in the Senate to get a big fight started over uh, which way to repeal the poll tax. There were two ways, and uh, we, uh, Katzenbach, felt one of them would be constitutional because he thought he could get it in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas uh, by challenging them in the courts, and uh, he couldn't get it in Vermont, and so if he had a blanket repeal, it would all go out, but if he had an individual uh, thing, he could uh, get rid of it. I told him to get rid of the poll tax any way in the world he could constitutionally without nullifying the whole law. I didn't want him to say I wrote a bad law it wouldn't stand up. And so they got some of them started over there and they got a challenge to it and uh, some of the boys wanted to go a little further and help a little more and uh, really it was the best judgment we had that instead of helping more it would help less. But anyway, finally we got it solved in the Senate and it was acceptable and uh, it worked out. I got over to the House and they've tried every way in the world they could. Uh, the first thing they did is they went to the uh, forces that are on our side and said, well, you've got to go, you've got to repeal the poll tax outright, which means you repeal Vermont. And Vermont is not a discriminatory tax and therefore the court wouldn't hold it and you wouldn't do any good. But they got McCormick and they got the real friends that we have to go all the way, hoping that that would uh, get the job done for them later on and would hold up the legislation. Uh, I think the civil rights leadership is coming around now to see the problem that we all have. And if they don't have much confidence in the Attorney General, they're going to be in trouble anyway because he's, he's the man we have to try to rely on to help us. And, and I picked him for that problem because he and Doerr and the others had demonstrated that they had the confidence of the leadership. Uh, but uh, uh, we got back then to uh, the big question, uh, uh, what do, how do we avoid this combination? And Judge Smith held it for a while and we had to file a 21-day rule. And there's been nobody really around here shoving it. I've done the best I could, but uh, they hit me on different sides, and the press is kind of uh, uh, the Vietnam or the Dominican Republic, or uh, uh, some mistake here, some mistake there, and uh, uh, I'm getting kind of cut up a little bit, and uh, Wilkins is having a national convention, and you were somewhere else, and uh, I called uh, uh, Meany to ask him to help. He'd gone to Europe. I called Ruther, and he won't be back till August. And I called Joe Rao. 
and said, for God's sake, see, you try to get in here before it's too late. We're all off celebrating and doing something else, and they're gonna they're gonna put a package together that I can see on it. And I called B. Miller, and uh, I got him to agree to go send some, and they got a wire sent from uh, Roy to uh, all the Republicans. But the Republicans are going to hold pretty well. They're not going to, they, they're going to quit the Negroes. They will not let the Negro vote for them. They just, every time they get a chance to help out a little, they'll blow it. And uh, they could help out here, and they could elect some good men in suburban districts and in cities. But they haven't got that much sense. That's why they're disintegrating as a party. So they're going to wind up uh, being pretty solid. Then they're going to get the Southerners. And to put the two together, it'll probably be within 10 votes of uh, counting. Now, when I went up with my message, I could have probably passed it by 75. But it's deteriorating, and uh, the other day they almost beat my rental, my rent subsidy, which is very important to the working groups and the poor people because when a man pays 25% of his income for rent, and we'll say a man makes 200 a month in New York City working in a bakery shop. Why, he pays uh, $50 a month rent, and his rent costs him maybe 67 Well, the government will come in after 25%, which is uh, $50 of his 200 uh, They'll pay the other 17 and a half themselves. And uh, it's the most uh, modern idea we've had. It takes care of lots of families, but they beat me. I, I'll beat them 208 to 202. But I had to work all night the night before, and we called 90 people, and uh, it was just a struggle of a lifetime. And the labor people who were supposed to be supporting it, they were off, and uh, couldn't get them to help. And what they've done is just kind of taking the victory, doctor, and not not uh, being concerned. Now, Smith comes out and says, my bill has had a lot of venom in it. And I have a great hatred for the South, and I'm like a rattlesnake. I'm trying to punish him and all that kind of stuff. So he gets the congressman from the uh, 13 old Confederate states, and he puts uh, 100 with 150 Republicans, and that gives him 250. And 250 is a good majority of 435. So we get some of them away from him. Uh, I'll get a few from Texas away from him, and we'll get a few from uh, uh, Tennessee away from him, uh, the Confederate states. But uh, he'll still get uh, 70, 80 of them, and unless we can pull some of the Republicans away, why, well, we are in trouble and we are dangerous. And even if we do, we get a bill in conference. Now, when he gets in conference uh, with this House insisting on repealing blank in the poll tax, repealing it in blank, we think the court will, will not uphold us in that. We think that's unconstitutional. We've said so. Well, we can't avoid it because our own friends have bought it and they want to be stronger for the Negro than, than Nick Katzenbach is. So we got to pass it that way. Uh, then it goes to conference. When it gets to conference, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't pass that way in the Senate because uh, the Senate will not take it. They know that it's unconstitutional and they got six-year terms and they're good lawyers and they're not going to vote for it. So they get in an argument and that delays it and maybe nothing comes out. But if something does come out, then you got to go back to Judge Smith again. And you got to get a rule from him. And he won't give you a rule. He, 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 so you got to file a petition and take another 21 days. Now, the smart thing to do if we had uh, people that would all stay with us and follow leadership and get in and, and, and when the ball goes through the center or around the end would follow it, would be to get some language that the leadership conference would agree on go in and see McCormick and our friends and say, now, let's take this language that the Senate will accept without it going to conference. So we can go on and get this bill passed and start registering our people and get them ready to vote next year. That's what we need to do. But uh, we, they're playing us, and we are not parliamentary smart enough. Uh, if you want to be honest now, you ask my advice, I'm just telling you. Uh, you, you're uh, either going to have confidence in me and in Katzenbach, or you ought to pick some leader you do have and then follow. Now, I, I, I started out on this vote bill last November, right after the election. I called them down and told them I was going to do it. Then I called you down here and told you what I was going to do. And I went before the Congress and made a speech and asked them to work every weekend. 
Then we all went off. They haven't had any heat except from me, and they're getting tired of the heat from me. They don't like for me to be asking for rent one day and poverty the next day, and education the next day, and voting rights the next day. And they know I can't defeat them out there in their district in Michigan or some other place. So I'm just fighting the battle the best I can. I think I'll win it, but it's going to be close and it's going to be dangerous. And I have notified uh, the labor people, and I've asked Lee White to talk to you and talk to uh, uh, Roy and talk to any of them that called him. Uh, Whitney Young, uh, I talked to a fellow named Proctor of New York in here today that uh, uh, with the Council of Churches. Uh, I, I tell them all that this is a very dangerous thing, and I've been at this business 35 years, and I got a wonderful response on my speech at Howard. I've had it printed. I've sent out to all the leaders over the country. I've got them writing their congressmen and their senators, but I cannot influence the Republicans. Now, the people that can influence the Republicans are men like uh, uh, the, the local chapters of CORE or NAACP or your group in uh, uh, New York and in uh, uh, Illinois, downstate Illinois, and in uh, Pennsylvania and in Ohio and these states where you've got a good many uh, Negro voters and you've got to say to them, now we, we're not uh, Democrats, we're going to vote for the man that give us freedom. We don't give a damn whether it's Abraham Lincoln or Lyndon Johnson. And we're going to know, and we're not, we, we, we're smart enough to know, and we're here watching you. And we want to see how you go through that televote, and we want to see how you answer on that roll call. Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Illinois, California, and uh, do it. Now, that's what we need. We need it Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and maybe uh, maybe even Saturday if they run over. And I told you about that. I said, now, don't come back to me after it's defeated and say, well, the president didn't give us leadership because I'm sound in warning. And you people put out a story Sunday. And that story says that there'll be less than a dozen votes difference. Now, they counted a good many Southerners voting with us. We think we'll lose some of those dozen that they give us. So, the, But the, we, we're going to try to pick up some more Republicans. That's where you got to pick them up. You know you're trying to pick up fellow Mississippi, Alabama, Virginia, those places. We'll pick up one or two from Florida. We'll pick up some from Texas. But the place you got to pick them up is Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, New York. Now, you get a fellow like Lindsey. He's running for mayor. And he's going to be with us. But you won't get a dozen Republicans. And we've got to get, to, to ought to get 25 of them. Or they ought to be defeated.